Hi folks and welcome to the show. My name is Tim Small. Thanks for joining me today. My guest on the show today is Nibs van der Spee. Nibs is one of the most extraordinary and exciting world acoustic guitarists to come out of South Africa. Raised in KwaZulu-Natal, growing up listening to the Beatles and learning firsthand from traditional Zulu Muscani guitarists, he quickly soaked up a rich tapestry of his close surroundings and has formulated a truly consummate and original sound. Nibs, welcome to the show. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me on. It's good to be here. It's kind of crazy that I'm sitting in 38 degrees uh, Lisbon while you in the Cape, in Cape Town. So thanks for the invite. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome, Nibs. And I've certainly seen you perform many times live. So I've spent some good quality time with you face to face. But even though we are now oceans apart, we can still connect and chat thanks to the, uh, the wonders of the modern age and the internet. So Nibs, you have a new album out today. It's a new live record called Live in Lisbon. And you performed it with Guy Buttery. So would you like to tell us a little bit more about this album? What well, is our first album in eight years, our first release in eight years. I mean, we solo artists in our own right, guys, an extraordinary fingerstyle guitarist, world-class fingerstyle guitarist, also from KwaZulu Natal. I actually was his guitar teacher when he was at school for three years. And then, I mean, he always had the special mojo in his music from an early age. So I encouraged him. He bought his first album out, solo album out, when he was 18. And I'd been making albums with the band Landscape Prayers, and I'd embarked on a solo career pretty much at that time in the early 2000s. And then we did plenty of shows together, I mean, uh, as a duo, but kind of promoting our own brand of music. We used to do a Nips from the Spade Guy Battery concert, but afterwards they say, which song was that? Okay, that's on Guy's solo album. And which song's that? Okay, that's on Nips's last solo album. And then we were doing a festival in France in 2010, and then we decided, why don't we do a duo album together? We're always doing all these shows together, playing in weird and wonderful places around the world. So we hit the studio during a tour in 2011, and then we recorded our first album in the Shade of the Wild Fig, which was really, it was critically acclaimed. It was nominated for a summer and got wonderful reviews across the world. And that just happened, you know, we, we released it, we toured it, then we went on our merry way, rec- releasing solo albums again. And, and then Guy came to visit me in Lisbon, my new home of the last six years last year and we booked a wonderful place at this venue in Belém, which is kind of the cradle of Lisbon where it's where all the the ships of discovery left 500 years ago there's a wonderful venue there called uh, Espaço Espelho de Agua which means the space of the mirror on the water and uh, so we booked a show there and it just the ingredients of what makes the chemistry between the two of us so great i mean the sum of the two of us together is bigger than both of us individually and uh the magic was in the air that night it was beautifully recorded and um i mean we forgot about it we actually that's the beauty of doing a show we didn't know it's been recorded the engineer had set everything up and that this concert was last september but uh, we only got the masters we found out like we heard that the show was recorded so i got hold of the engineer and he said yes no we recorded it so he, he sent us the separate files and Guy beautifully mixed them. I mean, the source was, was so in- incredible. And it was such a good thing that we didn't know we were recording because you're consciously aware that the tapes are rolling. So, yeah, Guy's been mixing it the last three weeks and today's release day, which is wonderful. Nibs, that's absolutely incredible. I had no idea that you had no idea that the album was being recorded. I mean, what a classic story. I mean, that is absolutely incredible, right? It is. It's a good thing. I mean, we knew the sound was great because we had like a top engineer doing the sound for us. And uh, I mean, it was only afterwards, like the lady who put the show together, the promoter, she said, did you ever hear the recordings? I said, what recording? She said, no, it was recorded. So I got hold of the guy on Facebook and he said, yes, it was. You would, would you like them? I mean, he made, he did a lovely mix of the show, but obviously guys got his little studio in Durban. So he, we just improved on what, Salvador, the engineer, did. And uh, yeah, it just, it just came out incredibly, incredibly well. Really, really happy about it. And Guy just did a wonderful job of mixing it and mastering it and editing it. You know, so we, yeah, we over the moon with the results and we 
that was really it's lovely to know that like well something happened a, a moment of time we weren't even aware of it we just remember that the night was magical so it was just an added bonus to get a message to say did you ever hear the recording i said what recording so here we are on the 7th of august and the, the album's gone live this morning exclusively on Bandcamp. so people can pay their own price for it and uh it's also free so people can receive a wonderful big fat audio file of it and not be compromised by tedious mp3 files put it that way i'm just really intrigued that the concept of discovering only afterwards that your show has been recorded that's that's really incredible and uh, the artwork for the album as well is really incredible who was the photographer that took the shot um it was a guy called uh Man, it's a friend of guys who happened to be ha- happened to be around. So the name eludes me now, but it's yeah, it's a beautiful classic shot and kind of epitomizes that evening big time. You know, <laughs> it really does. It was really, I mean, the lights were beautifully, the beautiful setting. The lighting was just perfect, and you know, and everything just fits. And it was an intimate audience, I guess, about fifty people, and can he fit in that room? It was a lovely, beautiful energy. I mean, people that come around, well, there were South African people who happened to be in Lisbon who saw the ad, who came out that night. So you had a mix of South African people, some fans of ours that seen us around in South Africa. They happened to be in Lisbon, as well as new Portuguese people that discovered our music. And uh, the concert was even introduced by the South African ambassador in Lisbon. Uh, it was beautiful. She gave us such a beautiful plug and uh yeah i was felt really proud to be south african doing our thing in a foreign country well it's not too foreign for me because i've been here for six years but it was good to share music with guy and in a different country again i mean we've done many shows across the world but this was really special it was just a special environment and i hadn't i hadn't played with guy for a really long time and you often wonder well we haven't practiced well we did play a few days together but we hadn't been on the road for like 12 days straight and then you push the record button because that you really you know your stuff so well and it's like you're comfortable with the arrangements of music and i'm mean, obviously a bit worried i think we haven't played the songs and we we're playing a whole bunch of new songs but the magic was there that night for sure and i'd been playing a, i just got a brand new 10 string guitar called the quattro puerto rican guitar i'd been playing one for years but this was a new one I'd, so it was the first concert i did with it and i'm so glad i did because it's such a beautiful rich sound as well You'll hear on most of the tracks, I mean, 75% of the tracks, I'm playing the quattro. So it's got the shimmery, almost sounds a bit like a 12-string fretted, I mean, capo at the seventh fret, you know. So it's got that really sparkling, undulating sound to it, which fits perfectly with Guy's beautiful textural playing. I've definitely heard you play the quattro live on some of your South African tours. I'm not sure if it's the exact same model that you played on this album, but it certainly is a beautiful instrument. Let's talk quickly about the tracks on this new album, Live in Lisbon. Obviously, there are a couple of songs that you have written, a couple of songs that Guy has written, perhaps even a track or two that you've composed together, I'm, I'm not sure. But let's look at the tracks that you have composed on this album first. I noticed that Trample on Lions and Madala are on this album. And of course, those are taken from one of your most recent solo albums, Natalia. That's correct, yes. My solo album was Natalia, which I'd recorded in England. I recorded with a wonderful producer called Mark Tucker, who had worked with Porter's Head and... Uh, PJ Harvey is another artist he had worked with. So I was really happy to work with him. So especially a track like Trample on Lions, I mean, you hear it on the Natalia album, it's got such a huge production. I mean, massive production. I've never had a such a massive production done to a song of mine ever. But the song started off like a, a Dylan-esque inspiration, say, from uh, Masters of War, from his Freewheeling album. And uh, that's how I kind of envisioned to play it live. And... Uh, and then, I mean, Guy loved that track, and he didn't play. I mean, we've played on each other's albums, but he wasn't present for, although he did play on a track on that album, uh, but he didn't play on this track. But he loved the track so much, and he just put a wonderful part to it, which isn't on the Natalia album. When you hear his guitar part, it's such a great hook, which kind of reels the song in. And that's the beauty of music, you know, like Guy and I write individually, but a lot of the songs, when we compose them, we can hear the other person in mind. and what. You can hear the part they're going to put in beforehand because we know each other so well. 
but it always happens when you swing an idea to one another. We always kind of bring the best out of the song. Like a guy will say, oh, I mean, what you did on my, for example, the first track in The Shade of the Wild Figures. I mean, I heard a part, but I didn't hear it as beautiful as that. So we kind of put our own personality to each other's composition. So in theory, they're actually Nips and Guy songs, most of them, because we're composing parts for each other's songs. But because we tour as solo artists and that we're on the road, our songs have to breathe in a different way when the other guy isn't there. And isn't it interesting when you think about how certain tracks emerge as crowd pleasers or crowd favorites as time goes by because when you released natalia in 2016 on that album every single song is incredible from you know paper rose to peace in our time to zululand it's it's a really incredible album but somehow trample on lions always stood out to me as one of my favorite tracks and so i'd always request it at the live shows and i thought it was just me i thought it was just me that loved this track so much so it's really exciting to see how that has emerged as a really popular song in your repertoire to be honest tim when i released natalia I never because the production is so huge on the album i just didn't play it i thought okay well that's an album song and then i thought well i always just love playing it and uh and it's got a kind of a weird rhythm. I'm a huge fan of the Allman Brothers band, a southern rock band. And on their debut album, they had a had a song, which is actually, I was so happy I heard it on uh, Star is Born in, in the one bar scene with <laughs> Lady Gaga. It's called Whipping Post. I love it song. And Whipping Post, okay, the intro is in 11-8, but the main body of the song is in 12-8. It's got a 12-8 rhythm, which I really love. And a lot of Zimbabwean music is actually in 12-8. So I thought, I've got to write a song in 12-8. Well, it kind of naturally, naturally evolved. I think we are what we eat, and we've got such huge inspirations, and it's a part of our life fabric. You're going to emulate what's in your heart and soul. So Trample on Lines is in 12-8, for sure. And if you listen to Allman Brothers' Whipping Post, you'll hear why, and you'll hear where the inspiration comes from, even though it's kind of written in a Dylan-esque feel of Masters of Wolves from the freewheeling album. So I never used to play it, but eventually people say, well, I really dig that song. So I thought, and I think I was playing it for my mother on the veranda one day in Durban. She said, why don't you play that live? So I said, well, I didn't think of it. So I think it was my mother who prompted me there. And yeah, I love playing it live now. And people really seem to dig it. You know, it's quite a biblical song. So I've plagiarized Psalm 91, which is kind of being protected while you're on the road. And what that's exactly what I do, <laughs> being protected doing what you love in different parts of the world. Well, speaking about being in different parts of the world, as you mentioned earlier on the show, a few years ago, you spread your wings and migrated north and moved to the Lisbon coast of Portugal. So you've been living there for a few years. I'd love it if you could tell the listeners about what it's been like living in Portugal, making it your second home, and even lead into a discussion about the record you released this year in 2020 called A Circle of Swallows, which is essentially a best of album. I kind of had a revelation. I mean, I was been playing in the North for a long time and just doing so many trips a year from South Africa. And I always thought, you know what, I love South Africa so much, but I also need a I would also love a little lock up and go northern home. And I always had dreams and visions of buying an apartment in Paris because I love Paris so much and the French connection. But uh, I mean, I'd never be able to afford an apartment in Paris, let alone the rent. <laughs> so, yeah, over the years, I saved money. And I mean, the time was right. I mean, I arrived here just loving, loving Lisbon. My sister, younger sister had moved here from England a few months previously. I came after a French tour came to visit the Lisbon coast, and it was just familiarity. familiarity. I mean, I love Mozam, and I, I've spoken Portuguese for years. Language is my second passion. So for me, the communication was really good, and I just loved the way of life. It was so slowed up, and I loved living on the ocean. I loved the architecture, the tiles, and I loved – it was like an Africanism about it as well, you know, and uh just happened, you know, within four months, you know, when – when fate happens and within four months you get your residence card and you've bought your apartment and you can't understand what happened. It just happened. And uh, I love living here. Um, it's my creative. I've got such a wonderful creative space here. I don't have a car. I've got bicycles. So I live on the river where the Tagus River meets the Atlantic Ocean. And that's where it's got this ancient charm. That's where these ancient caravels 500 years ago 
set off to discover the new world. It was between Spain and Portugal. So the Portuguese left from here. Even And there's a connection. Vasco da Gama left pretty much where I played the concert with Guy. In, in Portugal, they say Belém. English people say Belém. And uh, Vasco da Gama left, left the shores of pretty much where we played the gig in 1498 and set out en route to India. And on Christmas Day, he arrived in Durban Bay, the Bay of Port Natal, where Durban became a city. When he arrived, Durban wasn't a city. There were indigenous people at that stage. So for a week, he set anchor in Durban Bay. And people in South Africa don't even know it. First of all, okay, it's called KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu means the place of the Zulu uh, people in Zulu. And Natal is the word for Christmas in Portuguese. So it's because of Vasco da Gama, I live in the province of KwaZulu Natal, the place of the Zulu Christmas, basically. And that's because of Vasco da Gama. And uh, yeah, so definitely a connection there. He decided to go north and he was en route to India. And people always think, well, no, he was on his way to Mozambique because Mozambique's a former Portuguese colony. But um, no, the Portuguese arrived in Mozambique, I think, a decade later for real. So it's quite interesting, kind of interesting the history. And, and also while I'm talking about my albums, I released a, a compilation album this year called The Circle of Swallows, which is kind of a best of. And there are two sides of the story. I mean, I'm not good with uh, what's happening now with the whole streaming business. So I've got a young team who helped me get my stuff online. And they said, that instead of putting in your last album, which was like five years ago, just do a best of and uh, put the best songs from all your albums on. And then it's a good way of like repackaging old stuff with maybe a few songs from Natalia, which I did, and then just putting it out there, which I'm glad I did. So I thought I needed a, another connection. And in KwaZulu-Natal, the swallow is such a, a powerful bird, which, I mean, I, I go every year to where the barn swallows roost in the close to the Umschlange Rocks Basin in a place called Umschloti. And uh, I always see them, and then all of a sudden they migrate north. And I'm thinking, are oh, the same swallows I'm seeing in Portugal from that same basin in KwaZulu-Natal? And uh, I call it a circle of swallows because you always return. They always return. I always return home. And also the swallow is such a spiritual symbol of Portugal. It is the most spiritual uh, symbol of Portugal. It signifies unity, family, and belonging. And good luck. (laughs) So I thought that's a pretty cool title. Incredible. Now, Nibs, a few months ago when you were in Cape Town, I managed to catch a live show of yours at a lovely, intimate venue. In fact, it was a a house concert that was organized by Paul from Slow Life. You performed a couple of songs that you've been working on for a new album. And if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that many of those songs were written in Portugal and inspired by a lot of your time living in Lisbon. So I'm really excited to hear more if you are able to share with us about plans for a new album, because those songs that I heard were absolutely incredible. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I said I'm, I'm on my back. I mean, after this interview, I've got my guitar ready. I'm going to get on my bicycle. I'm, it's, okay, it's really hot weather. We've been having like between 35 and 38 degrees days here. Beautiful long summer days. The sun sets at 9.45 here. So I found my new creative ground. It's along the river here. Pretty much a little bit down river from where we recorded the concert. I live in my little village, which is actually eight kilometers from Belém, we recorded the concert. So that's kind of closer to Lisbon, and that's kind of where the – that's at the deep within the river mouth. I live exactly at the river mouth with the Tagus River, which starts in Spain, by the way, 300 k's past Madrid. It comes out in Lisbon, and um, I live at the river basin where the Tagus meets the Atlantic. I mean, as I'm look as I'm doing the interview now, I'm looking out of my window and I'm seeing all these beautiful old wooden fishing boats. It's like glass. The ocean's like glass at the moment. It's beautiful. So, I've got these beautiful nooks and crannies along the coastline, which I go to on a daily basis. A lot of my new songs have been born from sitting. I go to this late 17th century park. It's called Jardim de Cascata. It used to be the Queen's Summer Garden. 
and it's on the pretty much like a little setback from the ocean, but you can see the ocean there. And it looks like Versailles. If you've seen like the patterns of the gardens of Versailles, so it's, a lot of the gardens in the late 17th century were based on Versailles. So I go there every day and I sit under these oak trees and these old, old structures. And sometimes I'm the only person there for an hour. I mean, sometimes you'll have a, a senior citizen work walking their dog through there and you think, oh, cool, that's a bit of action. But sometimes I'll ha have the park to myself. So this, this little garden was flourishing 250 years ago and it's remained dormant for over 150 years. And they've redone the garden to its old specs in 1999, as well as some other landmarks on the river. I mean, it's either that or I'll go to this 16th century fort on the river and I'll go and sit in the walls of this fort and take my guitar there. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I've been inspired by this ancient spirit and ancient culture, which is so powerful. And so a lot of my songs have to do about destiny, fate, the swallow, the ocean, the ship, the boat plays a big role in the, my new lyrics, you know, and it's, it's kind of, I'm meant to be there at the right time. So going back to recording the album, I was meant to record it in May and I'm, I'm recording with, funny enough, Guy Battery, I've just recorded the live album with, he's got a beautiful home studio. He did my rough demos of the songs, which I'm going to send to you after the show. And um, so we're going to go for a very intimate bed sitter album with maybe very close up vocal and uh, intimate guitar with some string arrangements. And I'm also been discussing doing some vocal. I'm using this beautiful the, um, a cappella choir from KwaZulu Natal. They sing all the pr traditional beautiful Zulu songs, and I just hear them in the hear them in the mix. It's almost cake. And my songs are written here and on the Lisbon coast, but I've got to have a reminder of home within them as well. So that's, that's the plan. And I'm so glad I've kind of, uh, I wasn't meant to record in May, although it was my intention because I've written a whole bunch of new songs, which I'm really proud about. And I would have been quite angry if I recorded the album without including these new ones. So there you go. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to the new record. I hope it will come out this year, but perhaps uh, next year in 2021, but I'm sure the listeners will uh, be able to get hold of it uh, in due course. But just to mention, of course, for the listeners that they can find your entire discography on bandcamp.com. And the website link for that is nibsfunderspay.bandcamp.com. So they can go and hear all of your albums from over the last uh, decade or so. Well, Nibs, thanks so much for being an inspiration to so many people. You're an excellent songwriter. You're a world traveler with lots of stories and so much to offer the world on so many levels. So thank you so much for joining me on the show today. And I really look forward to hearing your new album when it comes out with all those amazing songs that you've written. And I can envision what it must be like living in Portugal. And hopefully one day I can even make the trip myself to see uh, what's going on in Lisbon. That'll be great. You'd always be my guest, Tim, and thank you so much for your time, and thanks for thinking of me today, and especially on release day with Guy, with our Live in Lisbon album. But yeah, thanks for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot.